Fellowship family, welcome to church. We are so glad that you're here. It is officially August and you're officially with us and we couldn't be more excited. Uh, my name is Michael Field, I'm a pastor here. And who do we have here? Oh, hi everybody. I'm Rachel Ceballos, also one of the pastors on staff. Good to be with you. And Rach, who are we? We say this, especially for our new people. Shout it out for the new people in the back. Who are we as a church? Yes, we are a gospel-centered, multi-ethnic, intergenerational church, and we exist to make disciples. Yeah, and for us, um, you, you heard that word multi-ethnic. And for us, this is a gospel-centric issue. We see, um, we see throughout scripture that we are called to be reconciled, not only to God, but to one another. Uh, and so we have our Center for Racial Reconciliation here at Fellowship, and we are about doing the restorative and redemptive and reconciling work of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you have not engaged our Center for Racial Reconciliation, we just invite you to engage it. You can see the information all the places that you can get connected to us. But if you're a part of this family, we want, we want you engaged in the Center for Racial Reconciliation. Yes, and part of that also, we are intergenerational. Yes, we are. We believe in the next generation. So if you have kids, you are a kid, yeah. or a youth, we believe in you. And right now, this weekend, we start our Camp Sundays. They are going to be incredible. Incredible. Um, so if you were able to make it this weekend, we hope to see you. If you still have not signed up, go online, check it out, and get registered. It's going to be incredible. Yeah, we have such good things in store for yeah. our kids. And we also have youth ministry. We had such an incredible youth camp this past week. God moved in incredible ways. And um, we have youth group coming up this Wednesday night, 7 p.m., Boys and Girls Club here in Monrovia. If you're uh, in junior high or high school, or if you have a junior high or high school, or if you know one, tell them about it. There's such incredible yes. people there and uh, you are just welcome to join us there. And hey, if you're joining us right now, we are so thankful. We just wanted to remind you of our service times. Uh, if you're in the local area, we're meeting starting this weekend on a weekly basis at Monrovia High School at 9 and 11 a.m. We are so excited yeah. to start to gather on a weekly basis with one another. So it's 9 and 11 a.m. locally in Monrovia High School. And if you're joining us online, like you are right now, Hi. thank you, hello. Um, <laughs> We are live at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. You can interact with us in the chat and just get that communal live experience online. But hey, we're on demand too. It's like Netflix. Anytime you want, starting on Sundays, this service will be available so you can you can enjoy this service and engage it in worship at your leisure. I yes, love I said it. leisure, not leisure. Yeah. Perfect, I yeah. love that. So that, that, those are our <laughs> service times. That's what's going on with that. And this weekend, we are starting an incredibly amazing new series, Entrusted. We are so excited that you're with us this morning. It's time for us right now to jump into worship. So wherever you are in your home, in your house, just get up, move your body. Uh, let's go before the Lord and just worship Him. So let's go. Never give 
no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, there's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. away hold oh, the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God thank you for your love thank you for your love Fellowship family, it is so good to be back. What an amazing summer speaker series. Um, so thankful for all of our friends that came uh, to just bring the word, and, and it was amazing. But we are back, we're hitting the ground running. Uh, August, I'm introducing a new series today, and I'm, I'm just excited to be back with our fellowship family. I don't know about you, but um, as we shift seasons, um, I've just been reminded, and as I've been praying about us and our church in this next season, I've just been reminded of how much God carries for us. And to be honest, a big part of our role as believers and followers of Jesus Christ, and even as our churches, is us taking the burdens and assigning God's name to them and entrusting to God the burdens, the weightiness, the things, the challenges of life. So uh, as I've been thinking, I've been thinking about, oh, for grace to be able to have burdens in God's name on them. And we're able to lift them to him and entrust them. And watch this. He takes the burdens away. So we're able to take anxiety and put God's name on it and surrender it to him and say, God, I trust you. I entrust you with my life. I take my life. I put your name on it. And God, I entrust you with, with, with my life. I, I trust you with with, with all that I'm going through, all that I have, I trust you with my family. I put your name on it, God, and I entrust you and I give it to you. Oh, what a joy. Like the, the, the reality of Christianity is the, our ability to be able to take our life and present it to the Father, cast our cares and give it away to him. I don't know about you, but I've been doing a lot of that in this season. A lot of taking what I have putting God's name on it and giving it to him. Here, here's the thing that I've been wrestling with. In, in, and as I've been giving to God, God has been tapping me and says, now, you know, it's a two way street. I, you, you, you've entrusted some things to me. And likewise, I've entrusted some things to you. Uh, the reality is 
This is not just a relationship where we give it to him and we entrust him and God, you, you, it's yours. I'm telling you, we got a God that looks at us and says, all right, now I want to give you some things and I want to entrust you and they're yours. God says, I, I want to entrust you. And as you look down, he's, he's saying here, I've, I've trusted, I've entrusted you with the resources. I, I've entrusted you with resources, so I want to I want to give you resources and I'm entrusting you with resources. I'm in, I'm entrusting you with your soul. You got to you got to take care of your soul. I'm entrusting you. So I'm 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 I'm, I'm empowering you and I'm giving that back to you. He says he says your, your health, your body. I'm I'm, in, I'm entrusting you to take care of your body and I'm giving and I'm giving it to you. Watch, watch this. And he says, look, I've entrusted time. I've entrusted time. I've, 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 I've entrusted you, you. You got a calendar. You got time. I've entrusted it. I'm, I'm, I'm giving it to you. So as we come back this August, I guess what what I want to talk about is not not a conversation about what we entrust to God. I think it's time we talk about the things that he's entrusted to us and how we care for and steward the things that he's entrusted to us. As we come into this season, it's important that we as the body of Christ know that God has invested in us. God has entrusted some things in us and God has expectations for us. The next few weeks are going to be really good. They're going to be really good, but I'm going to warn you, they're going to be really challenging. I've already been studying. I'm already convicted. I'm already, I'm already shredded. Like, I'm just telling you, it, it, I'm convicted. But this is a great series to invite friends to come along. It's a series called Entrusted, where we talk about what God has entrusted to us as followers of Jesus Christ. Y'all ready to get started? I hope y'all had some good time off. I'm ready. I'm all, I got it loaded up. I've been on vacation. I'm ready to hit it. Let's go. Let's pray and ask for God's grace, because I'm telling you, I'm already convicted, <laughs> but ask for God's grace and his mercy as we seek him concerning how we steward what he's entrusted into us. Father, I thank you so much for this time. I thank you for the fellowship family. I thank you for the opportunity to gather and sit under the authority and the power of your word so, Father, with that, would you speak, O oh Lord, your children have gathered to listen. Tune our ear to your voice so that we might hear you ever so clearly. Turn our hearts toward you so that we might experience the fullness of all that you have for us. God, it's to that end that I ask that you stand in my body, think through my mind, speak my vocal cords, those things you would have us say, know, and do. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, you are my strength. You are my redeemer. Get glory in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. To help us think about this idea of what God has entrusted in us and, and how he feels about what he's entrusted, uh, there's a powerful passage in the book of Matthew chapter 25, beginning around verse 14. We'll go through verses 14 to 30. Hear these words of our father. Uh, Again, it will be like a man going on a journey. Now, now, although already he's talking about what the kingdom of God is like. And you know, Jesus talks in parables. So he'll say, well, the kingdom of God is like this. And then he'll give an example or an illustration or parable. And then he'll say, or it's actually, it's, or, or, or it's like this. And he try to, he's trying to find a relatable concept for you to identify what the kingdom of God is like, because he's trying to explain something that people have never seen before. So when he starts our passage, he's, it's, it's, it's the idea of he's done one already. Now he's saying again, the kingdom of God is like this. It will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. Uh, to one, he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey uh, the man who received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work 
and gained five bags more. Uh, so also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. Uh, but the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground and his his master's money and hid his master's money. Uh, after a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. Uh, the man who received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done good and faithful servant. Parenthetically, that's the only place where this phrase shows up. So we quote this phrase all the time. This is where it comes from. And this is what he's speaking to. Well done, good and faithful servant. Watch this. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. One translation says, come into the joy uh, of your master. Uh, the man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done. Good and faithful servant, you have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Come into the joy. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are, I, I knew that you are a hard man uh, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and I gather where I have not scattered seed? Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers at a minimum so that when I return, I would have received it back, at least with interest. So take the bag of gold. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. Uh, for whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw the worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's a very fascinating parable. And, and I just want to give you a heads up here. Uh, it's, it's a parable unpacking the kingdom of God. And he uses a parable about money. It's about wealth. It's about how you deal with it. But it's, it's not exclusively about that because it's about the kingdom of God and how the kingdom, God, uh, 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 the kingdom of God works. So whereas it is about money, and we'll talk about that in a couple of weeks to come and how we're to steward that. But I, I want you to pull back and I just want you to think about a God who entrusts his servants and, and the expectation of his servants and how it is they steward what their God has entrusted in their hands. I guess I want us to walk away from these five weeks with the sobering reality check that our God has entrusted some things in us, in our hands. And it's a big deal what we do with it. It matters how we steward what God has given us, what he's entrusted to us. I think, think the first thing that's really clear in this parable that we've got to make sure we understand clearly. I can't help but think of a 90s sitcom show where a daughter goes to school and um, gets in a fight with some girls and she, she, she comes home and, and she's complaining to her parents about this fight she got into at school. And her parents were like, well, what was this fight about? Well, their family had just got this very expensive painting from an auction that was actually, in fact, a family heirloom. So they were recapturing a family heirloom and they paid a pretty high price for it. Well, 
uh, the, 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 the daughter was at school talking about the painting and well, she said how much it costs. Well, then they start saying, oh, you a rich girl, you a rich girl. So they start bullying her and making fun of her saying, rich girl, rich girl. And she got tired of it. She's like, I'm not a rich, she's like, stop making fun of me, I'm not a rich girl. And they talk just making fun of her, rich girl. So she gets into a fight. So she gets home and in this moment in the conversation when she's talking to her parents, she's like, so yeah, um, why do we have to be rich? And she kind of throws it in her parents' lap as if there is their fault. Well, the dad steps in and says, well, first of all, you ain't rich. Your parents are rich. You're broke. <laughs> let's, let's, get some, let's get some clear from the gate. You ain't rich. We rich. You broke. <laughs> I think that's an important lesson. I think as we come to this passage, you need to know that every resource that the servants had came from God. It all belongs to God. Everything that you've been entrusted with, you need to know that it belongs to God. It's not yours. It's not mine. It's God. So although they were given this, entrusted with it, it wasn't theirs. It belonged to God. So watch this. The ownership all belongs to God, but the stewardship all belongs to you. The ownership all belongs to God, but the stewardship belongs to you. And it's important that you don't get that crisscross. It's important that you don't get that out of order. Uh, Robert Morris, who has written wonderful books on stewardship, a lot of the inspiration from the next five weeks uh, will, will come out of my readings and study time with him. Um, he, he tells a story as they have built a wonderful building and had this big campaign and they, they got this great building and he's really in a space where he's just thanking God for his faithfulness. And he, he says, as he's standing with one of his members, uh, I mean, to be honest, one of his wealthy uh, high capacity donor members. He says, oh, God did it. God built this building. God built everything. God did it. God gets all the glory and all the credit. And the, and the donor, uh, you know, says, says kind of jokingly, yeah, well, you know, I helped too, because he wrote a big check. And then the pastor says, no, nah, God did it all. God did it all. God built this building. God built this building. And, you know, he's being funny, but he says, well, I, 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 I did help. He says, no, nah, God did it. God did it all by himself. God built this building. And then he kind of jokingly says back to him, but he says, well, well, you didn't say that. When you was asking me for, for a check, you didn't, you didn't say it. You didn't say that then. It's like, no, nah, God, God did it. God did it. Well, then he says, yeah, OK, God did it. But God used my money. And then, and then he says, no, nah, uh -uh. God built it and God used his money. See what I did there? See the nuance? Worst thing you can do is begin to think through what God has entrusted you with and begin to think that it's yours. Even though you've been entrusted with it, it ain't yours. It's still God's. It's still God's. It all belongs to God. And all the stewardship belongs to us. And God has said, I've entrusted you with with, with this gold in the passage. I've entrusted it to you, not for you to walk around and say, I got it, but for you to now walk around and say, I get to steward it. I get to steward it. Um, how, how you see it shapes what you do, what you, what you do with it. How, how you see it shapes what you do with it. I, I, guess, I guess the first point uh, that, I, that I want us to see is that we are stewards, not owners. We are stewards, not owners. Um, and, and, and here's the second idea, the, the idea of, it's kind of like this. I, um, my friend, 
leased a car. And we've never leased a car because I just know how a lease works and we're just too hard on it. What, it. what it is is how you see a thing shapes how you use a thing. So um, my friend and they got a bunch of kids and they had this car. And I mean, when I tell you the kids just tore it up, man. They kicked kicking seats and dents and seats, Cheerios and French fries stuck in places that you just can't get out of, uh, dents from the door, slamming the other things, slamming other cars or whatever. They got it. And with the lease, you kind of, you have a lease for a season, but then you got to turn it back in. And, and that's when you turn the lease back in, that's when you get the sobering reminder that you weren't the owner of the car. You were just leasing the car. You were just a steward of the car. But you got to turn that car back in. And what they do is they come then and they give account. They take account of the car and the, the condition of the car. They take into account how you treated the car. They take into account what you did with the car. They take into account um, uh, the dents and the damage to the car. And then there's a cost then passed on to you because they take into account and evaluate how well did you steward that that they entrusted you with. Oh, come on, y'all get it early. I won't have to preach as long. We can get out early today. I think the first point is we need to see ourselves as stewards and not owners. The second point is simply this. Jesus is coming back and he's going to give an account of what he entrusted you with. We, we, we're going to have to give an account. He's going to take an account, take into account what, we, what he entrusted with us. And if you treat your life like you're an owner and don't pay attention to the damage, don't pay attention to the, the quality of use, one day we're going to stand, we're going to stand before God. And he's going to say, what did you do with the life that I gave you? What did you do with the resources that I blessed you with? What did you do with your body? What did you do with your soul? What did you do with the, I entrusted you with life? What did you do with it? We're going to have to give account. He invested them with, with five bags of gold, five, two, two bags and one bag. And, it, and then he comes back and he says very practically, this, is, this ain't spiritual, spiritually deep, this ain't theologically complicated. It's very simple. He's going to say, what did you do with it? And we're going to have to give an account for this lease that we've had. And how you see it shapes how you use it. If you see it yourself as an owner, then you're not taking, you're not taking into to consideration the cost. But if you see yourself as just a steward, as just a manager, then there's a burden because I know the owner's going to come back one day and he's going to ask me, how did you treat what I entrusted in your hand? What did you do with it? And we're going to have to give an answer. Sometimes we miss these moments in the Bible. We, we just think love is love and we can just do what we want and the grace of God and, the trust. and all those things are real and we talk about all those things, but I would be less of a pastor. I would be less of a preacher if I didn't say a part of our journey, a part of our walking with Jesus is yes, he's entrusted, but yes, he expects an accounting of that that he's entrusted in our hand. He going to ask you what it should do with it. To those who did well, who, who multiplied, watch what he says. He says, well done, good and faithful servant. He says, thank you for being faithful. And he rewards and celebrates and calls out their faithfulness. And then watch this. He says, now come into the joy. Come, come into the happiness. Come, come into the peace. I implication, there's just a joy and a peace of being faithful to what God has entrusted you with. There's just, there's just a joy, there's a peace, there is, there is an abundance that comes with faithfulness. Notice the caveat here is to your ability. And this is whole life faithfulness, whole life stewardship. We'll get to the specific things, but, but, but just your whole life, I want you to think about God has entrusted you 
Will he find you faithful? And when he finds you faithful, and as you walk in faithfulness, there's a joy that comes with it. There's a joy that he invites us into. You're a steward, not an owner. And one day we will have to give accountability to what he's entrusted in our hands. He says to the first and to the second, well done, that good and faithful servant. He says, come into the joy. Come into the happiness. Then he gets to the third. You guys read it. The third just took what God gave him and put it in the ground. He took what God entrusted in his hands and put it in the ground. And, and then we see this, I mean, visceral rebuke from God. We, we see this, this, this terrible rebuke. He says, he says, you worthless servant. He says, throw that worthless servant outside into darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Why, why such a drastic rebuke? Why such a hard rebuke? Well, let's look at why the others got complimented for faithfulness. And they were faithful and there was growth. There was increase. This servant, what he said, number one, he was driven not by faithfulness, but by fear. He says, I was afraid. <sighs> if you're going to follow Jesus, you got to follow him by faith, not by fear. Because if you follow Jesus by fear and not by faith, you're going to miss the opportunity of seeing God's hand move and increase in your life. The problem with this last servant is he didn't have any growth, any increase. He didn't make anything better. He didn't take any risk. He didn't do anything advantageous, adventurous. He didn't do anything. He just put it in the ground. What he did required no faith at all. Let me tell you, if you follow in Jesus and it ain't requiring you to have no faith, then you probably ain't following Jesus. A part of following Jesus is saying, I'm walking by faith. I ain't got it all figured out. The risk baked in. There's adventure baked in. There's also increase. God says, if you're just faithful, if you're just faithful, there'll be increase. There'll be growth. There'll be better. So you got to focus on taking risks so that you might be better, taking risks so that you might grow in God, taking risks so that you might be advanced adventurous and go on the full journey that God has for you that ultimately culminates in your purpose and your destiny and the joy that you get to come into because you have been faithful over a few things. Therefore, oh, I'm going to give you more because of your faithfulness. Some of you wondering why you ain't got more because you ain't been faithful over a few. And if you ain't been faithful over a few, you ain't going to be faithful over more. If you can't steward what he's already got in your hands, what makes you think you're going to steward better more? in his hands. So some of you need to stop praying for more and start praying for faithfulness over the few because out of the faithfulness of the few, he'll always give you more. Oh, I wish I had a witness up in here. This servant's problem is that he was lazy and he did not walk in faith. He did not increase what God was doing in his life. He did not just played it safe. And he didn't believe. And he allowed fear to dictate his steps instead of allowing God to order his steps. <sighs> God has entrusted you with some things that only you can steward and only you can manage. Only you can steward and only you can manage. Time, only you can steward and only you can manage. Your health, can't nobody do that for you. Only you can steward that. The body that God has given you, the body, the body. Because every, God, every good thing God does, he's going to do it in you and through you. So for now, you need this body. And, and, and God's blessings are going to flow through your body. He's going to use time. 
Your soul, only you can steward your soul. Nobody else can help you manage that. And finances and resources. How, how, how God has blessed you with resources, regardless of what, to, according to your ability, according to the resources that you have, what you're doing with them. I guess what I want you to see is in this passage, God says, I gave you something. And I expect you to do something with it. I'm not just sitting up in heaven just saying, oh, you're just vicariously going through life. Let him just, no, I entrusted you with something. I expect you to do something with it. When we entrust things to God, don't we expect him to do something with it? He said, I entrusted some things in you and I expect you to do something with it. And the question is, what are you doing with what I've entrusted you with? How are you stewarding it? And I'm going to give an account and I'm going to look at it. Yeah, I'm going to make judgment. It's, it's going to impact. It'll have eternal impact. So yeah, as we start a new season, church, as we go into a new, new season and new era, I want us to begin to think about family. What are we doing with what God has given us? Because the worst thing you can do is take the life he's given you and just put it in the ground. Oh, what a terrible testimony of a follower of Jesus Christ. He gave me so much and the only thing I did with it I lived, I died, and it all got put in the ground. I guess what I'm saying is, on the other side of what you put in the ground, you're going to have to give an account for what you put in the ground. And when you stand before God as your pastor, my biggest prayer for you is that God, as God looks at what you put in the ground, and on the other side of that, you'll hear these words. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Come into the joy. You will experience that joy throughout all eternity. That's my prayer for you. And it's all for his glory. Amen. Oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you.
with the never-ending love he loves us. Oh, how he loves He gave his life just to prove he loves us. He gave himself just to prove he loves us. He loves us. Oh. Fellowship family, it's been a rich time uh, of reflecting yeah. on God's love for us. Um, a God who loved us so much that he entrusted us with these gifts. Um, and we just want to say, um, if you felt something during the service, if, if something spoke to you, if something was provoked in you, uh, if something about this time together moved you in any way, shape, or form, we just want to let you know that we're here for you. Uh, we're here for you whether you're in a really low place and you just need help or somebody to talk to, or if you're in a place where you're ready to say, I want in or I, I, and I want to talk to somebody about what it looks like to steward my gifts, uh, we are here for you. You can see the information on the bottom of the screen about how you can reach out to us, but we just want to want you to know that we are here for you now and we'll continue to be here for you. Absolutely and we want to see you go on to your next faithful step and so we ask two questions that is who are you doing life with and where are you serving? We'd love to see you get connected into a group, into a connection, into anything that can help you find that next step and also, maybe that's serving. We'd yeah. love to serve alongside you. Yeah, absolutely. And we also just want to thank you. We want to thank yeah. you for your faithfulness and your giving uh, throughout this last year and a half. It has been a crazy, crazy year and a half in this world. And it's been astounding to us to see uh, our church continue to show up faithfully in their giving. And we always say this, giving is just an act of worship. Yeah. It's saying, God, I trust everything that you've given to me is a gift from you. And so I trust you with my resources and it's this act of, of obedience and faithfulness. So we want to say thank you for being so faithful and invite you into another opportunity to be faithful right now. Uh, it's time to give uh, right now, Fellowship. Absolutely. And as we're staying connected with you, we hope to see you if you live local this weekend in person at Moravia High School. It's going to be an incredible time together. And if you are our online family, you're family. And we're so thankful you're here. Keep checking us out. Um, all information can be found online, but we're just we're glad you're here. Yeah. It, it, Fellowship family, it's been such a rich morning and you know because of the richness of this, you're not going to want to miss one week of this series. No. Um, stay engaged, yeah. weekly basis. Uh, God has entrusted us with mm -hmm. these gifts and he's yeah. calling us to steward them for his kingdom, for his glory. He has a plan to use the gifts that he's given you. So our prayer for you this week yeah. uh, is that you would know that in the depths mm -hmm. of your soul and that you would start to understand what that looks like in your life. And Fellowship family, that you would know that you're not alone, that you are part of this community and yes. a part of this family and we love you so very much. Uh, we'll see you next week, Fellowship. Bye, everybody.